My name is Dr. Kent Remington. I'm an aesthetic dermatologist practicing in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I have both my fellowship for dermatology in Canada and the United States. I have practiced only aesthetic dermatology for at least 20 plus years. I have 24 different laser light energy devices in our clinic and I started the first private laser center in Canada in 1979. And since then, I've performed over 120,000 laser cases past uh, 42 years. This focus for this project is on my approach to treating gauge earlobes with uh, lasers. Ears tell their own story. The language of ears is quite fascinating. And uh, if you look at the spectrum of, uh, of ears, ears send a message and tell a story almost immediately. If you look at these cauliflower ears uh, and Conor McGregor on the right there and from wrestling, kickboxing, boxing, they have quite a unique pattern, these cauliflower ears. But ears will tell a story just like the rest of the face for uh, the physiognomy of just reading faces and before any verbiage ears write a story. If you look at gauge earlobe history, it starts way back at ancient uh, pharaoh times, and uh, it's a fascinating history around the world of these gauge earlobes of different shapes, sizes, and uh, ethnic groups from Ethiopia to Western Africa to the Asian hill tribes that have uh, gauge earlobes. So it started in North America and in Europe a number of years ago, and there's many techniques of trying to stretch the earlobes from dead stretching, weights, Teflon tape uh, stretchers, dermal punches, and silicon plugs. These tapering conical rods are the most popular, but many of my patients that I inherit to treat these have done this on their own with different, quite archaic devices. The anatomy of the face and the ear are related to mathematics. Genetics is all about biology. Biology comes down to physiology. Physiology is about physics, and physics is all about math. So the balance of ears is important to understand. The great outcomes for all the things we do with faces and ears are the result of good mathematics. So I measure everything as with, I do with ears. The anatomy of the ear is a little complex, but basically it's the helix, antihelix, concha, tragus, antitragus, and the lobule of the ear. And uh, it has this uh, definite phi golden ratio pattern in the beautiful ear and those ears that balance the rest of the face. But if we look at the anatomy a little closer, anyone that's uh, interested in, as a physician in performing surgery for a gauge earlobe to, to understand the detailed anatomy of the ear, the vascular structure, the various types of ears. There's two basic types of earlobes, the free earlobe, the pendulous lobe, and the attached earlobe. So it makes a difference in how you approach the patient. So gauge earlobe repair, I've used an ultrapulse laser for a number of years. It's excellent. It has uh, the CO2 laser component that I'm interested in with the aftermarket 0.1 millimeter spot size using a focus defocus mode. I'll, I'll demonstrate a little bit how we approach this. So gauge earlobe repair is uh, requires steps like being a chef. There's steps that, that I take that I recommend that in the syntax of events need to be in order to get the end result we're looking for. Here our patient has had um, 1.5 inches, 3.8 centimeter type gauge ear piercing for 15 plus years and now with a career change wants to remove this. So what we do is understand that right and left side of the face are not twins, they're siblings and right and left ears are sometimes just cousins. So you have to make sure to measure both and understand what those measurements mean before and after. So if we look at his gauge earlobe that when he had his gauge in, and now we start looking at how we're going to correct this. So we'll do detailed photographs, evaluation, and then I start drawing this out. And as I use the ultrapulse CO2 laser in a focus mode, I'll excise the areas that I want to trim out. And then I have to trim all the skin in the, in the inner part of the circle. 
you cannot stitch skin and tack skin together, it just won't work. So what we do is, once we excise that portion, then I uh, start removing the extra skin on the inner part of the circle. And then after I've taken off the long part here on the left of the helix to fit, then I start the suture at the apex and I draw this right around so that it matches. And uh, once we've done that, you'll see immediately post-surgery, it's got an excellent fit and uh, this is sutured. So if we look, this is uh, three weeks later, he has an excellent end result. And of course, with modeling and molding of collagen and elastic tissue, it'll just get better and better. So if we look at this three weeks on the left side, uh, equally as good with a restored earlobe from what we started out with the gauge. So I sketch this out and I draw this out for each patient to match what they have. And as I sketch it out, it's sort of like double vision. I see what the issues are. And then the second part of the vision is to be able to see the end result before I start. So with the uh, some graphics here, I can show you a little bit after I've drawn this out, we'll make the first incision with the Ultrapulse CO2 laser in a focus mode, 0.1 millimeter spot size, excise this uh, first portion here right through, and it's essentially bloodless. Then I'll trim off that uh, inner circle, it's a very fine band. The top end in this case is right next to the cartilage of the ear. So you have to be very careful in getting uh, close enough to the cartilage, but staying away from it, so you'll have nice tissue to resuture. So once we've uh, taken this off the inner circle, then I can start uh, the process of suturing it all together, and we'll excise the flap on the left part of the helix as well. But here I'm just trimming this all off, and as I trim it off, it's essentially just a focus and defocus part of the laser, and uh, with essentially it's bloodless. If you have a little bit of bleeding, you just defocus a bit and seal it. So it's a very tidy procedure and painless for patients because it's all anesthetized. So here I'm putting a little traction suture just to hold this part of the low back, and then I'll trim off the, the tag of the helix that's too long. As we trim that off, then we'll uh, start the finishing project here. So we'll put a little suture at the apex to start with here. Then I'm trimming this tag off and we've brought this right around so we can measure right where it is. And as we measure this, then we can start the suturing process to match everything up. And the suture front and back. Generally I'll use 6-0 or 5-0 ethylon. And I'll often use a mattress suture as well to keep everything in place. And that's immediately after of his right ear done. And we'll show a little bit of the, the posterior ear as well. Very easy for patients. And after you've done a lot of these, this becomes fairly straightforward, but every patient's different. So our second patient has a one sonometer, or one, one inch actually, 2.5 sonometer gauge ear piercing. And just her lifestyle has changed. She wants it removed. So you start measuring and doing all the photographs, and we'll use the ultrapulse laser and uh, draw this out. So exactly where I want to go with this patient, and uh, then that double vision concept I'm talking about, you'll be able to see the end result before you start. So that's uh, the ear refied. In other words, the measurements are back to where they should be with the golden ratio. So we get that anatomy balance back, that's eight days after. Get the balance and harmony back. All this is measured. Our next patient has got a very ragged, uneven, gouged out gauge earlobes that have been present for quite a number of years. And her lifestyle's changed. She wants it removed. You can see how ragged it is. So these become much more difficult to remove. So measure everything out. You can see the tissue that I've removed here. And then suture this is eight days later and get the balance back so her ears are refied, which, which means they're just rebalanced here. This is three months post-surgery. 
So you can see if we look at the posterior view, which is a good view to look at, she has an excellent result even for three months. Thank you very much.